can you see my screen? Yep. Yes, we do. Cool. Yeah. Thanks a lot for the introduction again. Um, hello, everyone. I am Mohammed, a PhD student in Max Planck Institute for Intelligent Systems. And in this talk, I will present our paper wipe, uh, Video Inference for Human Body Pose and Shape Estimation. And this is a collaboration with Nico Satanasiu and Mike Black from MPI Intelligent Systems. So here is a brief outline of the presentation today. I will start with the, our broader goal, some preliminaries, simple GANs and HMR. And I will present the details of WIPE and lastly, the limitations and some follow-up works. So um, like we are here for a CVPR conference, right? And let's look at a formal definition of computer vision. And Wikipedia defines it as computer vision seeks to understand and automate tasks that the human perception can do. So briefly, it is defined as the understanding and imitation of human per perception. And proven by a long line of research efforts, motion is one principal cue that helps perception. So here um, you saw some still dots on the screen and they are a bit hard to interpret, but when they start to move, suddenly our brain perceives them as a walking human. And we can recognize the activity performed by these rather arbitrary points and in, in special space. And these interesting properties of motion inspired people to come up with creative ways uh, to record right after the invention of the cameras. And here you see an image sequence taken, taken by Etienne Jules Mary, a French scientist who is the inventor of chronophotographic gun. And this is, an, uh, the, this is the ancestor of movie cameras basically in the old times. And more recently, with the emergence of computers, scientists try to capture and track human motion in 3D. And early works in this area dates back to 1983 to David Hawke's walking human model. And motivated by these facts, our goal in this paper is to estimate human body pose and shape from a video with more advanced tools we have today. And specifically, we tackle the problem of predicting a body model representation, namely simple from an input video. Let's look at some preliminaries. Um, so there's not much to introduce here, but simple um, is a genital model uh, that factors human bodies into shape and pose parameters. Um, but the interesting thing here is simple is a differentiable function that outputs a triangulated mesh and allows us to backpropagate and which is suitable for neural networks. And also it provides 3D key points, which are useful for pose estimation methods. And also we use in this work generative adversarial networks, GANs in short. Um, GANs are basically generative models, which has a generator and a discriminator module. And the generator attempts to generate realistic samples to fool the discriminator. And the discriminator tries to tell apart if the generated samples come from a real distribution or um, from the generator itself. And uh, human mesh recovery, HMR in short, that is a common approach to estimate simple from images in an end-to-end -end framework. Uh, it is introduced by Anju Kanazawa, who is a speaker today, and, um, and um, her colleagues in CVPR 2018. Um, so how, let's see how it works. A human mesh recovery passes an input image I um, through a convolutional encoder. And these convolutional features of the image are sent to a 3D regression module, whose objective is to infer the 3D human body and the camera. Then these 3D joints are projected to 2D using the estimated big perspective camera. Every projection loss is minimized um, to match the projected and the ground truth to the key points. So the reprojection loss encourages the network to produce 3D body that explains the 2D joint locations. But however, um, this can result in implausible 3D bodies um, or bodies with this kind of gross self intersections. And this still minimizes the reprojection loss I presented earlier. So to regularize this, they use a discriminator network that is trained to tell whether simple parameters correspond to a real body or not. And real body samples come from a large collection of simple bodies registered to real human scans and their um, plausible samples. And also in a recent extension called temporal HMR, they extended HMR to work with videos they utilize a temporal CNN module in between the feature extractor, um, ResNet in this case, and the simple regressor. And this temporal information helps to produce smoother and stable results over time. Um, however, it fails to produce accurate predictions as shown in this video. 
And one re major reason behind this is the lack of in the wild ground root 3D annotations, which are not trivial to obtain even for single images. Um, therefore, we combine, um, therefore, they combine indoor 3D data sets with videos having 2D key point annotations as a weak supervision. Um, but there are some failures uh, or drawbacks of these data sets as well. Um, firstly, indoor 3D data sets are limited in the number of subjects, range of motions, and image complexity. Um, secondly, the amount of videos labeled with ground truth 2D pose is still insufficient uh, to train deep networks, especially video-based uh, deep networks. And also, thirdly, um, they use pseudo ground truth data set, um, which is annotated by open pose. And these 2D labels are not reliable for modeling human emotion and they are quite noisy and, un and unstable over time. Um, so to address this, all these problems, we take inspiration from HMR again, that uses an unpaired data set of static 3D humans in an adversarial training approach. However, we want to be able to train a temporal model. So the question is how to obtain realistic motion sequences in sufficient quality for such kind of an uh, adversarial training. Um, for that, uh, fortunately, we have AMAS. Um, we leverage AMAS dataset, which is sufficiently rich to model, to learn a model of how people move. It's a large scale dataset. And our approach learns to estimate sequences such that a discriminator cannot tell the difference between the estimated uh, motion and the AMAS motions. Um, we call the resulting method WIBE. Um, here, given the video of a person, we train a temporal model to predict the simple parameters, while a motion discriminator tries to distinguish between real and predicted sequences. Everything is trained end to end in a conditional genetic adversarial manner. Let's dive into the details of our approach. Given an input video of a single person, we extract the features of each frame using a pre trained CNN model. And these convolutional features are processed using gated recurrent units, GRUs, um, which is a type of recurrent neural networks. And GRUs help to incorporate temporal information back and forth. Um, then the parameters of the simple body model are estimated for each time step in the video. Um, we, refer, we refer to the model described so far as the temporal generator. And the intuition behind this model is that future frames can benefit from past video pause information. And this is especially useful um, when the pose of a person is ambiguous or a body is partially occluded um, in, in some frames. Um, assuming that uh, the temporal generator produces some pose predictions lacking realism, um, we use AMAS as a source of real motion sequences so that we can train a motion discriminator that can differentiate this fake and real examples. Um, the architecture of the motion discriminator is fairly simple. Um, it is a multi-layer GRU model that takes a sequence of poses as input, um, followed by a self-attention layer, and the linear layer that predicts a binary classification label. And here we use self-attention instead of using the final hidden state or some handcrafted combination of intermediate hidden states. The reason is to be able to amplify the contribution of the most important frames in the final decision. Overall, uh, the loss is composed of a 2D key, pro key point projection loss, 3D joint loss, simple pose and shape losses, and the motion discriminator loss. Um, note that we only use 3D losses when the 3D annotations, um, simple or 3D joint annotations are available. Um, to train our method, we use a mixture of 2D and 3D data sets, similar to previous work. Um, and here I will present some of the quantitative results. So for the evaluation, an in the wild benchmark called 3DPW is used, and we report the mean per joint position error to evaluate the performance. Uh, basically, this metric measures the Euclidean distance between predicted and the ground root joints. Um, this bar chart shows the joint error on the y-axis and different methods on the x-axis. Lower error means better performance. So here, HMR and SPIN, which are shown with red um, boxes, are frame-based pose and shape estimation methods. Um, on the other hand, temporal HMR and VIBE um, take video as input. 
and vibe improves the performance um, around uh, 20 millimeters compared to the temporal HMR model. And this chart shows the performance of um, methods, basically wipe with and without the motion discriminator. And we observe using motion discriminator helps to improve the performance. And some qualitative results. Um, this sequence shows some diverse range of motions from a soccer game. So um, as you can see, wipe can perform very well in the case of motion blur two. And uh, so in this, Results, we obtain multi-person results using a real-time multi-object tracker. So it runs almost in real time. Um, in summary, we present uh, a state-of-the-art pose and shape estimation method. And we show that this discriminative training, temporal discriminator, uh, helps um, to improve the realisticity, uh, realism of the motions. And our training and the, the demo code is available and it's quite easy to use. You can try it yourself. We also have a collab demo which you can use um, easily. And so in this part, I would like to mention some of the limitations and some of the follow-up works that tackle uh, these limitations. So occlusion um, is one big problem. Here you see the result of why on a short video featuring different kinds of occlusion such as frame occlusion, scene occlusion, and multi-person occlusion. And as you can see, why it doesn't do a good job in these cases, it produces some unstable results. Um, in a follow-up work um, called pair, we tackle this problem of occlusion. And here you see the result on the same video. And as you can see, it is more stable and better at producing more plausible results um, in, in case of occlusion. And you can refer to our archive paper um, for more details. Um, in another follow-up work, Lee and her colleagues introduced a motion prior to refine the wide estimations to solve, again, this occlusion and motion jitter problem. And uh, this motion prior is quite helpful to eliminate jitter and um, to handle occluded frames, as you can see from these samples. Um, it, basically, the the key idea in, in the method is a hierarchical motion VAE. And like in, along with video pause estimation refinement, they show the performance of their uh, motion prior in other tasks like motion interpolation, generation, and completion. So it's a versatile uh, motion prior. Um, so another problem that we face with wipe, um, wipe does not take scene constraints into account. Hence, it struggles with scene occlusion inconsistent by the translation and ground penetration. And in a very recent work named Humor, Humor um, the authors tackle this problem by training a motion prior again, uh, which can model the contact between the ground plane and, and the human body. And this motion prior is used during test time optimization to estimate 3D motion along with ground contact from 2D key point observations. And this later, this ground contact labels are used as an additional term in the optimization to enforce plausible scene grounding. Um, so lastly, uh, the one of the other failure cases of vibe is human to human interaction. So vibe basically relies on uh, pre-computed bounding boxes, and this leads to such failure cases. Um, so thanks for listening. Um, and you can find more about our project from these links. And I'm happy to answer it if you have any questions. Thank you, Mohammed, for the very nice talk. Are there any questions? So I had a, I had a, um, I had a couple of questions. Uh, first is, mm -hmm. um, uh, unlike the rest of the body, the feet always seems to be uh, mis- um, misestimated so and and this this is just happens only for the feet um do you have any insights why that's the that could be um, the case yeah i mean probably feet is like one of the most um moving parts of the human body so it is a bit hard to model feet motion i think in general but other than that the training objectives we use um, doesn't take feet into account in most cases so as I show, uh, like the training data set we use for in the wild sequences are basically 2D key points. Uh, mm -hmm. The annotations are 2D key point annotations. 
and it doesn't do a good job um, when we train with such noisy annotations in the wild. I see. Uh, and also, like, um, if you don't model the food and scene contact, so I think one thing that constrains the feet motion is is the scene itself, and we don't consider uh, it as well during training. So that might be another problem. So better, basically better, uh, better modeling of the scene and using better ground truth would help in. Yeah, exactly, yeah. There's okay. a question asking why human object interaction and hand object interaction are dealt with separately. I actually think that's a, an interesting question. I think it's just what uh, different communities and um, there was never up until simple X, uh, there wasn't a unified body model with hand and body, so you couldn't really do hand object interaction and body interaction altogether. 